appreciates when we, he knows the enemy's against us. He knows the enemy tries to stifle us. He, he'll just do anything and everything to keep us from coming to church and being a part. And, and uh, I know that that's just one example. Many of us struggle with that. And I know my family, like I said, we, uh, it seems like Sunday mornings the burner's up. Um, and so even, even this morning, we had technical trouble. We had printer troubles. We had trouble getting anywhere on time. Uh, and so uh, I'm thankful for uh, those of you who take the time uh, to come to church. Uh, it's still important, isn't it? It's Amen. still important that families come to church. Amen. And so we want to always encourage each other in that. And I'm encouraged by them. And so uh, today, before we get started, let's go to the Lord in prayer one more time. Father, again, I'm thankful um, for all that you are and all that you've done for me. Amen. And God, for the friends that you put in my life, for my church family, um, God, I'm just so thankful. Um, you bless me, God, with health. Uh, you bless me with strength. And God, you allow me a small portion in your kingdom work. Um, God, forgive me for not being a better steward. Forgive me for not being a better servant. Uh, because God, you've given us all that we need. And to be good at both. And God, I'm thankful that you still choose to use the least. Uh, help us in this message today, Father. You know my anxiety. And God, I turn it all over to you. Uh, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. And amen. amen. Well, Lord, I didn't notice. Are we on here? Okay. Um, still doing the Facebook live service. If you ever have to miss, um, it's on my Facebook page. And then I always post these two. Uh, my YouTube page as well. So feel free to direct people there or um, if you uh, miss at any time, uh, we're so glad that that resource is available. Um, and so today we want to know the truth. Um, this is kind of a continuation from last Sunday's message. Uh, last week we talked about choices and decisions uh, that we make in and through our vote. Uh, and so we discussed actually how abortion uh, was wrong biblically and how we should use our vote to stand on biblical principles. Now, many people believe uh, that the church uh, and biblical or that the church and biblical principles have uh, no place in politics, and and I have to believe just the opposite. I think we as Christians should be casting our vote uh, for men and women who stand and vote on uh, the same biblical principles that we say we believe. Uh, and so the question was asked this week. I don't remember if I ran into this on Facebook because, um, you know, it, it's, it's not easy sometimes uh, to preach messages like we did last Sunday. And, but in the church, you don't seem to, to get as many opinions as you do out in the real world. And so there were lots of opinions expressed on uh, Facebook. And as we know, sometimes uh, it's good not to know what people think because if you ask them, they're certainly going to tell you, aren't they? But uh, um, I, I think that uh, the, the question that was asked this week that I think I want to open with today was, what if we don't have a moral candidate to vote for? Uh, and so what I can say is I think that we're in that dilemma this year with our presidential election. Um, I think that uh, neither candidate that we choose has an outstanding moral character. And so as a Christian, that kind of puts us in a bind, doesn't it? It puts us uh, kind of uh, not knowing what to do. So where does that leave us as Christians wanting to vote for godly men and women? Well, I think for me, it puts me in the position of voting for how they stand on biblical principles. And I explained this to you, <coughs> excuse me, last week. Uh, so and I, I always look at issues that the Bible is very, very clear on. Uh, and so the issue last week of abortion the Bible is very, very clear on. There's no gray area. Um, there's no up for debate if you believe the Bible is truth. And so that's why I titled uh, the, uh, our message today, Know the Truth. Because if you believe that the Bible is truth, then you understand the Bible speaks against abortion uh, of any kind. Because as we saw last week in God's Word, God knew us before we were born. God knew us even before he weaved us in our mother's womb. And so today, uh, the second biblical issue uh, that is very clear in God's word, and it's, and it's just as, um, uh, it's not a hot topic, but it's certainly a one of controversy. Um, and there may be, and there always has been, especially over the last 20 years, controversy in this subject. And, and, and that is the subject of homosexuality. Um, how that has crept in uh, to our lives, how it's crept into our cartoons that our kids watch or our Christmas movies 
uh, that we watch or <clears throat> our school system or a government or anything like that. And so we need to know if we're really searching to know the truth and if we as Christians stand on what the Bible says, we need to know what the Bible says about homosexuality. And so uh, the act of homosexual lifestyle uh, and, and that it actually stands in opposition uh, to the Word of God. And so uh, the Bible actually says that it's an abomination, as we're going to see, uh, that goes against one of God's most sacred institutions. And if you don't think that the enemy is using homosexuality to divide up and break up our families and the definition, the, the biblical definition of marriage, then you haven't been paying attention. Because one of the reasons we're having so many problems in our school systems and in our society is because the, the biblical definition of the home has been disrupted. Um, and I say that with all of the vigor uh, and all of the strength that I can, um, that we need, as Christians, need to be teaching how important it is to have uh, a home that is biblically based. Uh, with a husband that is a man and a wife who is a woman who is uh, at the third uh, of the marriage uh, at, with Jesus Christ and how they use that to raise their family. Because the problem that has been happening is the enemy has been saying that there's all these other things that can take the place of the family and it's the family where the Christian values are instituted. Uh, and so we're missing that. I, I promise you, as 27 years as an educator, I can tell you that's what we're missing in the schools. That's what we're missing in our kids. And, and God bless the mamas who are raising the kids on their own. God bless the grandparents who are raising the kids on their own and they're trying their best uh, to do what uh, God uh, gave to and, and ordained that a man should do uh, because we are certainly not doing as men what we're supposed to do. And so one of those uh, things that has crept in and is taking the place uh, of the biblical definition of marriage is homosexuality. Uh, the LGBTQ uh, push that is in our nation uh, is one of the things that's, that's helping to destroy that. And so uh, in the scriptures we're going to look at today, uh, there's actually three or four things that I, I think we need to see. And so the first is that the world always tries to change God's truth into a lie. Always happens. Number two, according to the Bible, homosexuality is an abomination to God. And then the third thing is that we are to love the sinner and hate the sin. Did you understand what I just said? And this is going to be a huge message. Some people are going to turn off on Facebook. They're going to scroll on because the message is on homosexuality. Uh, but they're not going to hear the part of that we as Christians have to find a way to love the sinner. Regardless of their lifestyle, we're going to have to find a way to love them. But you know why? Because Jesus loves them. Uh, and so that's a, a third point. And the fourth point I'm going to try to make is that our vote uh, should put people in power who stand for biblical principles. And so the first thing uh, that we're going to look at is that the world always tries to change God's word uh, into a lie. So let's go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Abby's going to get me because I didn't want you to beat me there, so I didn't tell you the verse. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Beginning in verse 24. Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 24. And this is what the Bible says. It says, Wherefore... God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Look at this. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. 
And, and so if we read God's word and we understand it to be true, uh, and, and here's the argument. If, if someone believes God's word is truly God's word, then you have to understand God's word speaks against the homosexual lifestyle. It speaks against the LGBTQ that we hear all of the time and has infiltrated uh, not only our schools, our cartoons, our movies, anything and everything, our music. We, we see this all the time now. And for us to understand, we, or we need to understand that it goes against God's word. And so the first point that I want to make was in verse 25, uh, people turn God's word into a lie. They say that it's really not God's word. They say that it was, it's outdated. It's not up to date. It certainly doesn't apply to me. And it was written by men uh, who actually you could even say it was written by a bunch of old uh, white men or Jewish men or people that don't understand our culture or whatever excuse that you want to use. But God's word is still God's word. Amen. And so we see here, it says, who changed the truth of God into a lie. The truth of God is God's word. Uh, it has stood the test of time. Uh, God's book is still God's book. Amen. And whether we believe it or not, it is still going to stand to the end of time. And it is where God uh, shows how much he loves us. It tells us what is sin and what is not sin. It tells us what he wants for our lives. And it tells what he doesn't want for our lives. It all of everything encompasses what we do in life, and it is the standard, it is the authority for how we should live and what we should consider right and wrong. God's word considers homosexuality to be wrong. And if you believe God's word, that is what it says. The argument should never come from, uh, well, God's word says this. Well, God's word doesn't mean what it says. God's word always means what it says, even when we don't understand it. The argument comes when people say that God's word is a lie. But we know God says right here uh, that who changed the truth, these people, uh, that uh, they started worshiping themselves more than they worshiped the creator. Uh, do we not live in a world that's all about the me generation? It's all about look at me. It's all about what I can do. It's all about what I'm not getting. All of these things center around the individual and do not center around the creator. And so God says right here that these people change the truth into a, uh, the truth of God <clears throat> into a lie. Uh, and so we see here <clears throat> that even in biblical times, that men were having sex with men and women were having sex with women. Uh, and there were all kinds of this, uh, these things happening uh, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And, and the Bible says that God gave them over to a reprobate mind. That means God let them do what they wanted to do. They didn't acknowledge him as God. They didn't acknowledge his word as truth. And so God let them do what they wanted to do. Now, we as Christians need to understand that there's a world out there of non-Christians trying to change God's word into a lie. You'll hear people say things, and you're going to hear this more and more. God's word, the people, the Christians that believe God's word is hate speech. They're going to believe that, uh, that the people that believe that homosexuality is wrong are just haters. Uh, and they're going to equate it to all kinds of things. Um, like one of the hot topics right now, and, and I might uh, get some flack on this, but we need to know the truth. Black Lives Matter. Uh, Black Lives Matter is a homosexual uh, group that has gotten on the coattails of civil rights, and they're trying to use civil rights and some of those things that uh, make America ashamed uh, as an LGBTQ right. They are against the family. Now, is this an opinion, brother? Are you just saying this because you don't like black people or because you don't think the civil rights movement is something that's important? You better go back and look at my message from a few weeks ago. Racism is wrong. Racism is against God's word because God's word says that we're all created in God's image. And there's a whole message that I preach with scripture to back that up. But folks, I'm going to tell you something. Black Lives Matter is using the homosexual agenda and they're preying on people of color who have uh, this, this issue uh, and they know and they've seen how they've been uh, discriminated against 
And this is not what Black Lives Matter is for. You read their platform, you read their mission statement, and it was it is a group that is uh, from two homosexual women, two lesbian women, and it says in there that they are against the traditional family, that they are for the homosexual agenda. And I'm going to tell you, folks, that's not popular preaching, but I'm going to tell you it goes against the Word of God. That's right. It goes against the word of God. We are to love people. And I'm going to tell you just a real snippet uh, on the, the thought of racism. Uh, anywhere there's injustice, Christians should be standing up. Whether it's for black people, whether it's for white people, whether it's for the young or the old, uh, whether it's for believers or non-believers, whether it's for homosexuals or not. If there's an injustice, Christians should be loving and standing up for those injustices. And I'm going to tell you, in the United States, when it comes to racism, there's some things we haven't stood up for. But the one thing that is being used uh, by the homosexual agenda is Black Lives Matter. Go to your internet and read their mission statement for yourself and see if you don't come to that conclusion. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, uh, there are people who are pushing the homosexual agenda and they're saying that God's word is a lie. And anybody that preaches against the homosexual agenda uh, should be uh, thrown in jail. They, it should be hate speech. And, and certainly um, it's not a popular subject uh, to preach on. But the world uh, has always been and is still trying to change God's word into a lie. Uh, the second thing we, talked, we want to talk about today is according to the Bible, homosexuality is an abomination uh, to God. And so uh, turn with me to the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. God is talking to his people about the things, and, and there's, there's a whole chapter and a half here dealing with sexual uh, relations. Okay, and what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Verse 22 of Leviticus 18 says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Turn over to Leviticus 20, uh, verse 13. Leviticus 20, just a page over or two, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind, and as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall, shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. And so from the Old Testament to the New Testament, if you want to go back and read about Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah were two cities that were destroyed. And, and, and I just studied this this week. I did not understand this until now. Uh, but the two angels that came to Lot's house and, and they came to the door beating on the door wanting uh, the men of the city wanting to see these two uh, angels, uh, they were actually wanting to uh, uh, commit sodomy with those angels. That's what they were wanting to do and Lot wouldn't open the door for them and because the angels had actually come to destroy the city and save Lot's family. And so um, that's a whole different story. But I did not know that it was based on that. Uh, it was such a vile city with vile people and God chose to destroy it. And we need to be very careful, America, because as a nation, uh, we, have, we have stood uh, and been a Christian nation. We were founded on Christian principles by Christian men and women. Uh, and now it seems we're turning away from God's laws. We're turning God's law into a lie and saying that things like uh, homosexuality are, are just things that we should accept. Things that, well, that, that, well, the Bible's been wrong about all these years. And so this is not the case. Uh, from the beginning, uh, let's turn to Mark chapter 10. From the beginning, this was not God's plan. Uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 6. You know, a lot of people forget that God instituted the home before he did the church. Uh, and we know that Jesus died for the church. So what does that say about God and what he thinks about the family? The biblical definition of family. Well, let's see what Mark uh, records that Jesus himself said in Mark chapter 10, verse 6. It says, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this cause uh, shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh, so then they are no more twain, but one flesh. Uh, and so we understand that from the beginning, it was a male for the man and a female uh, for the wife. And this was, the, the from the beginning, the definition of marriage. Uh, and this is what God still intends today uh, for, to happen uh, with us, is that there is 
going to be a, a man and a woman definition for marriage. And you and I need to stand for that biblical definition. Uh, it's, it's not a homosexual definition. It's not a, well, it's okay, but we've also got this that we're going to add to it. It's, it's an abomination to God. Amen. It is not what God intended from the beginning, and it's still not what he intends for uh, us in the United States of America today. Amen. You know what scares me? It scares me when I read about Sodom and Gomorrah and I think about how uh, the United States of America has allowed sin uh, to, to continue. Yep. And folks, I'm not doing this from a self-righteous self state. I, uh, if you know me, you understand that I'm an imperfect man and, uh, and, and I'm a sinner. By definition, by the word, you look, you look up sinner in the Bible and you, or, or in, in the de dictionary and you can see my picture. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm a bold sinner sometimes I, and I'm not bragging on that, but I just am. And you are too. But for us not to stand on biblical principles with our vote, for us not to stand on biblical principles uh, for the people that know us is wrong. That's right. We need to stand up for God's word where we say, and, and, and I'm thankful, folks, that we live in a country where we have freedom to believe what we want, to worship how we want. Uh, I, I believe that uh, the election process is important and we need to be a part of it. But we have got to make sure that we're voting for biblical principles. Amen. It would be a lot easier, and, and I admit this, it would be so much easier if we had a godly man or a godly woman where we knew we're going to vote uh, straight down the line for God's word. But I don't think we do. And so what we have to do is, is look and see what they say about these biblical principles. Uh, and we understand and know um, that homosexuality is certainly a sin. And it's not just a sin, it's a sinful lifestyle. And so I also have to, to say this, the, the third point, and, and we need to make this clear when, uh, when we're talking about any sin in God's word, and that is uh, God loves the sinner, does he not? Did Jesus not come to die on the cross for sinners? Amen. Did Am I to sit here and say that I am a better sinner than somebody else who lives a homosexual lifestyle? We're still all sinners, right? right. Now, just because I don't have that lifestyle doesn't mean that I'm not a sinner. And it doesn't mean uh, that you're not a sinner. But what it does mean is that as Christians, we know the difference, don't we? And we go to God, or we should go to God every day and ask Him to forgive us of our sins. We're to confess those sins to Him. And the Bible says He's faithful and just to forgive us. And I'm going to tell you this. Because you and I are sinners, we have no right to judge anybody else's sin. Now, Brother Andy, you're just sitting there preaching homosexuality is wrong. We need to cast our vote for people that are against homosexuality. Amen. Amen. We should. Yep. But at the same time, you and I as Christians have to find a way to love the sinner, to love the homosexual. I've got friends I know that are homosexuals. I've got family that I know who are open homosexuals. And, and I, and, and I want to make sure that I don't ever alienate them. I don't want to uh, get to the point where they think, well, Andy Corbin is against homosexuality. That means he must hate me. Folks, there's a world full of hate. And that's not from God. That's right. It's not from God. We are all sinned. Now, does that mean we sugarcoat what the Word of God says? Absolutely not. Does that mean we water down what the Word of God says? Absolutely not. But you and I better make sure that we're showing love first. Yeah. I don't remember what the song is, but uh, it, it goes something like this. It says, what would Jesus do? Jesus would love first. Yeah. And I believe that, folks. We have got to find a way to love people even if they are a sinful lifestyle. Even if uh, we understand that they support at the top of their lungs a homosexual lifestyle, we still have to love those people because that's what Jesus does. Now again, God's word is God's word, right? Amen. I think one of the hardest things for the church in modern America is to love people without being judgmental. The Bible says that there's only one person that you and I are able to judge. You know who the Bible says that is? We judge ourselves. Yeah. The Bible says we are to judge ourselves lest God has to judge us. That's, right. That's why we need to forgive people so readily. That's why we need to make sure we offer forgiveness.
forgiveness because uh, if we don't offer forgiveness, we don't receive forgiveness. God's word, not Andy Corbin's word. And so we're to love the sinner and hate the sin. We're to make sure that uh, we understand that God is the only righteous judge. Amen. But God's word is still God's word and it is against homosexuality. But our job is to love the sinner no matter what their lifestyle is. Whether they're a drunkard, maybe they're living with somebody, maybe it's homosexuality, maybe it's pornography, maybe it's drugs, uh, maybe it's whatever sin you can think of that God's word declares is sin. You and I are not the righteous judge. And I think the church is suffering because at, at some time we have been. That's not our job. Our job is to love people and to explain to them what the Word of God says. And let God be the judge. And so, God's Word is clear. Uh, we understand that the world tries to change God's Word into a lie. Uh, we need to understand the Bible teaches homosexuality is wrong. Uh, we need to understand that our job is to not judge anybody's lifestyle, but to love them regardless of their sin in their life. Still teaching what God's word says is true. And lastly, as Christians, our vote should reflect that. Well, Brother Andy, I, I, again, I don't think uh, that, that the church, uh, God shouldn't be involved with politics at all. I think it's just the opposite. I think when you say ch separation of church and state, uh, when our forefathers uh, put that in there, I think it was to keep government out of the church, not the church out of government. Right. Because you can read too many letters, you can read too many things that those men and women talked about and did and prayed for and asked God to show and asked God to bless. And guess what God did? Yes, sir. He Amen. did. That's right. And now in modern day America, it seems like we're going the other direction. Yep. And so we need to, that's why it's so important that we vote and we vote for those Christian principles, those biblical principles that we know. Not that the candidates are going to be perfect. Not that the candidates aren't bold sinners in and of themselves. Because for the most part, they are. But we have to put our vote behind those men and women that stand for biblical principles. And so, my words aren't much sway. Um, if you listen to any preacher, if he's good enough to change your opinion, then somebody else is good enough to change it back. Stand on the Word of God. Amen. What does the Word of God say? And if the Word of God, if we as Christians believe what it says is the Word of God, and we as Christians try, are trying to abide by what it says, then it should affect our life. And so that's between you and God. When you get in that little cubicle, um, it's between you and God. But know what the Word of God says. Understand what the Word of God says. And try to let pray. Pray even before you vote. Amen. Um, I think that's so important. Pray even before you do that. And so uh, today at least, I hope that you uh, know a little more of the truth. I hope you know a little more about God's Word. Uh, and we certainly want to pray uh, for our nation and for our upcoming election. Um, pray again that God would be the person, uh, the supreme being that we look to for all the answers Amen. in America. Pray again for a great revival that starts with you and with me and, and transforms into the city, that transforms into the state, that transforms into the nation. A great turning back to God uh, should be at the top of our list. And so let's pray together and ask Him for that. God, once again, um, I want your words to be heard and not mine. Um, God, I want people's opinions to be based on what your word says and not mine. And God, again, if I am in the way at all, God, remove me. Uh, keep me out of that because I know my opinion uh, is of no sway. God, we help us as Christians in a world that seems to be turning away from you uh, to show love uh, without judgment. But being able to stand on what your word says. God, how difficult that is. And Lord, we already know you understand that. God, help us once again because we need you desperately. For it's in Jesus' name I pray.